All right, in this video, what I want to do is kind of continue with what I was talking about in the previous video, except instead of focusing on what statistics is in the context of this class and when you do it, I want to focus on how you do it. So what we learned in the previous video is that if you have a question that's about a group that's too large to measure directly, uh, then you will be using this process that we're going to call statistics as we learn it in this class. And the basic process of what you're going to do is you're going to find a group that's smaller, small enough to measure directly. And you will measure that group directly, calculate things that we call statistics, uh, and use those to estimate things that we call parameters. You're going to answer your question about the larger group by studying the smaller group. But how? Right? So that's generally talking about what you do, but how do you physically go and do that? Well, what we're going to learn about in this video is called a four-step process of statistics. And what this will do is kind of detail how you go about answering questions about a population using data from a sample. Uh, so the four-step process of statistics. Your first step, uh, it's stated a little bit differently in different books, but essentially what you're doing is you're formulating your question. So what are you doing here? Why are you doing statistics? Oh, I got this question. It's about a really, really large group. Okay, what's your question? You're formulating your question. You want to know what percentage of all Texans have the COVID virus at some point. Fine, you formulate your question. Your second step, well, you have to collect some data. And I guess you could argue that there's some kind of sub-steps in between here. When you formulate your question, you're identifying your population, at which point you're also identifying your sample because you recognize that your population is too large to measure directly. And when you recognize your sample, then you can collect data from that sample. And so step two, I'm picturing like uh, a clipboard with a bunch of names or numbers on it, whatever, a bunch of data on it. So like in this example, maybe uh, the first person tested positive, the second person did not, the third person also did not, the fourth person did not, and so on. And we had, what did I say? 500 people, so you can sort of imagine 500 different yeses and nos over here in a list. It's raw data. It's very hard to just look at this list and draw any meaningful conclusion about your population, but you have the means to do it. You have the necessary materials, if you will, um, but it's just not in a format that's very usable when you're done with the second step. So that brings us to our third step, where you analyze the data. Uh, this is sometimes called descriptive statistics. Not super important that you're familiar with that terminology. Just an FYI thing. And I guess the, the name sort of makes sense. We're describing data, hence descriptive statistics. So you have all these yeses and nos, and it's not really useful. You can't draw any conclusions right now. What could you do? Well, an easy thing you could do is just count how many yeses you got. Right? Or maybe you could figure out how many yeses you have and divide that by the total amount to figure out what percentage of them are yeses. What you'll learn in this class is there's lots of other ways that we can analyze the data. Um, you can make different plots. If you've heard of things like histograms, you can do that not with this specific data, but generally speaking. Um, you can calculate things like means and medians and standard deviations. If you're familiar with any of those terms or phrases, great. You don't need to be at all. The point is just you're going to learn a lot of different ways you can analyze data. And the whole purpose of analyzing data is changing it from its raw form, which isn't super useful, to a form where you can draw a conclusion. In the example from the last video, the step three was really simple. We didn't do much at all. We just count how many yeses we had, or 50 of them, and divide by how many total observations we have, 500, to figure out that 10% of our sample had tested positive for the coronavirus. Uh, now that you've analyzed your data, and again, it can be really simple or really complicated, you're ready to make your conclusion. This process of drawing your conclusion is sometimes called uh, inferential statistics. And that kind of root word sort of also makes sense. The idea here is when you're drawing your conclusion, you're drawing the conclusion about the population. Right, so you're using sample data, you're using data from the small group to draw conclusions about the large group. You're estimating the parameters based upon the statistics. So really, you're making inferences. Because 10% of my sample had COVID, I'm concluding that between 7 and 13% of my population has COVID. I'm making an inference about the population 
based on data that I have about the sample. This is what's called the four step process of statistics. And this is kind of the outline for how we're gonna be doing problems in this class. What do you need to get out of this video? Well, I guess it's nice to be able to break it up into these four steps because what you'll see is once we finish learning vocabulary, we're gonna focus a lot on, okay, so how do you do descriptive statistics? Teach me a bunch of ways to analyze data. Um, then once we learn all that, how do you draw conclusions? This idea of this seven and 13%, how'd you come up with those numbers, that kind of stuff. What we'll do to kind of organize this class is I will refer to what we're doing in terms of these four steps. So I don't know that they're super necessary to know as far as like being tested. Don't expect a midterm question saying, tell me the four step process of statistics. But I think it'll help you if you have these four steps in your head to keep everything straight. If you uh, can kind of don't lose the forest for the trees or whatever that expression is. If you can think about big picture what we're doing, it might help you understand all the little processes that we're doing. The one other thing that I want to add before I call this video good is these four steps, I'd really like you to understand them in terms of the sample and the population. So what do I mean there? Well, from the last video, I wanted you comfortable with just what the difference is between a sample and a population. And to kind of cement that knowledge, I want to apply those terms to these four steps. So when we formulate a question, I want you to know that the question is always, 100% of the time, going to be about the population. All right, the question has to be about the population. The question has to be about a group that's too large to measure directly because otherwise we wouldn't be using statistics in the first place. Right, this is a statistics class. When I ask you statistics questions, questions are going to be about the population, always, 100% of the time. So what are you going to do? You're going to collect data from who? Not from the population. The population is too damn big to collect data from. So you're going to find a representative subset of that group instead of all Texans, 500 Texans, for example and uh, collect data from them. So this is dealing with your sample. Step three, you're analyzing that data. This has nothing to do with the population. This is still just dealing with the sample. You're taking this group of 500 yeses and nos, and you're summarizing it, analyzing it, performing descriptive statistics. And again, maybe it's simple. Maybe it's just figuring out the 10% said yes. Maybe it's really complicated and you're calculating interquartile ranges and standard deviations, terms that you'll learn as this class goes on. You analyze this sample data, and then you draw your conclusion. But your conclusion, importantly, is not about the sample. You don't want to say, all right, I did all this analysis, and now I can confidently say that 10% of these 500 Texans tested positive. That's a true statement, but it's not your conclusion, because you want your conclusion to answer the question that you're asking in the first place. And the question you're asking is not what percentage of the 500 Texans have COVID, it was what percentage of all Texans have COVID. So what you want to do when you're drawing your conclusion is make sure that your conclusion is referring to the population and not the sample. That's your four-step process of statistics. And I think being somewhat comfortable with these terms and these ideas will help you navigate the rest of the class.